Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today for another video. So in this installment, we'll be looking at a communication standard known as Extreme Radio Service or EXRS. It's a proprietary personal communication technology which was, up until 2012, marketed by a company in the United States called TriSquare. Now the radios use the Part 15 low power communication 915 MHz band that's allocated in the United States and use frequency hopping spread spectrum FM technology and the system was developed in an attempt to address some of the shortcomings of the common family radio service or FRS. Now since the frequency in use is rapidly changed in a pattern defined by the channel number which I'll go to in a minute, transmissions cannot be monitored by commercially available radio scanners. The standard is actually quite amazing in that the radios hop on 50 actual frequencies from a pool of 700 spaced 25 kilohertz apart between 906.275 and 923.750 megahertz. This gives users 10 billion unique frequency hopping pattern combinations which are in fact different channels. Now, due to the extremely high number of these available channels, users are unlikely to encounter others on the same channel and interference is unlikely unless the source knows the channel number being used. So depending on which 10 digit channel code is chosen, an embedded pseudo random number generator algorithm selects a different set of 50 frequencies to hop and cycle through every 20 seconds. Each 400 millisecond hop frame contains both voice and data. And since each radio knows, based on the channel selection, what the hopping frequencies are as well as their order, the receiving radio only needs to know when to start hopping to remain synchronized. The receiver starts hopping when the preamble signal is received and stops hopping 20 seconds after no signal is received. So I hope that makes sense. TriSquare claimed that reliable communications can be maintained with up to 100,000 users in range of each other. This is in contrast to regular FRS or GMRS radios which only permit 14 or 22 users to transmit simultaneously one user per frequency in range of each other and even with privacy codes or PL tones that simply prevent one user on a channel from hearing another on the same channel but do nothing to prevent interference. The range of the EXRS radios is not explicitly stated, however the manufacturer claims that it is equal to or greater than FRS and GMRS, but I'd say this is questionable for a number of reasons. The frequency of operation is much higher than FRS and GMRS and is much more line of sight, and the signal is more susceptible to being blocked by objects in its path such as buildings, cars, trees and hills. Even in an open space at this frequency, the maximum path of the signal transmitted is likely to be around 6 miles due to the curvature of the Earth. As we've discussed before, there are many variables that determine the effective range of two-way radios, but TriSquare actually refused to make any specific distance claims, unlike so many FRS and GMRS vendors that make crazy claims like range up to 25 miles and more. Instead, TriSquare guaranteed its EXRS radios will meet or exceed the range performance of other UHF handy talkies. Testing confirmed this claim with range comparable to a pair of 2 watt 70cm amateur radio handy talkies in simplex mode. Outdoors over flat terrain, the TXS 300's effective range was about 1.5 miles and over 3 miles from hill to hill. The radios perform particularly well inside tall office buildings and from the 55th floor of Philadelphia's Liberty Place Tower, usable voice and text communications with another TSX 300 in the lobby was achieved. And on the road between cars, the TSX 300's range was reduced to less than a mile, probably due to signal attenuation by the vehicle's steel bodies and other obstructions. By employing digital radio modes, the TSX 300, which I have here, is able to send SMS type text messages directly to other radios, identify the transmissions with a user defined name, and clone information and channels to other radios over the air. Due to the abundance of available channels, each radio can be given a personal channel, which allows users both to contact individual radios privately and to contact multiple users on group channels. Now I should point out that no license is needed in the USA to operate the radios for personal or commercial use, however in the UK and Europe they are illegal to use. So we're going to look at the radios themselves, there were two main models that were produced, the TSX100 and the TSX300, and we're going to be looking at the 300 model. Now this model retailed at around $100 for a pack of two, which wasn't actually bad for such an interesting concept. 
The radios have quite a lot of features, um, just to name a few, they have a output power of 1 watt, they're interference free and free from eavesdropping or harassment, they send text messages with no fees, they have caller ID, group and private calling, call waiting, voice operated transmission, a phone book which stores up to 100 contacts, a backlit keypad and display, silent mode operation, page call and vibrate alert, a NOAA weather receiver which means you can receive the NOAA weather channels, a nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery pack or 3AA batteries and they're compatible with all other EXRS radios. And they also had a clone option which allowed a radio's configuration to be sent wirelessly to other handsets, eliminating the need for programming cables and computers. Now as I said before, the radios are not legal for use in the UK but I will show you a quick sample of the audio for test purposes only. So as you can see the audio isn't amazing, it sounds like low bitrate compressed audio, but it is audible. Since 2012 TriSquare has unfortunately been out of business and hasn't developed its system any further, which is a shame. I'm unsure if the rights have been sold to another company or not, but it'd be nice to see further developments of this standard. And the website is also offline and has been since 2014. So there you have it, Extreme Radio Service, another defunct form of radio communications, but in my opinion one that should have gone a lot further. The end user I feel TriSquare was after was more of the outdoors hunting and shooting, survival and airsoft type demographic. There were more reviews and write-ups of these radios in these types of magazines than communication publications and this may have been a contributing factor to the downfall of the company. So I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did give it a thumbs up, if you have any comments, suggestions or questions then drop them in the box below. Quite an interesting standard we've discussed here, the uh, spread spectrum frequency hopping. I have got another few videos of different forms of this coming so make sure you, make sure you stay tuned for them. And all that's left to say is 7.3, thanks very much for watching, we'll catch you in the next one, cheers.